Balder is the intimate prefabricated wood coaster Lisa Berry. This ride is chock full of ejector airtime. Few rides offer more of this type of airtime, but it also may be a bit too repetitive for its own good. I'll explain why in this review. Traditional wood coasters have their track cut and shaped on site by experienced carpenters. Compare that to steel coasters where the track is fabricated off site. Intamin developed a new method to build wood coasters in the early 2000s. It was more similar to a steel coaster. Track would be laser cut in a factory. This had two advantages. First, the track had more precise tolerances, meaning it could offer a more intense and smoother ride than traditional woodies. Second, the track had snapped together like Lego pieces, meaning it could accelerate construction. This is why the prefabricated wood coasters were also nicknamed plug and plays. The prototype prefab went to Haida Park in 2001. Named Colossus, this opened as the tallest and fastest wood coaster in all of Europe. Balder was the second prefab. It opened in 2003 as Sweden's only wood coaster. Only two more Intamin prefabs would ever be built. There was Six Flags Great Adventures El Toro in 2006, and Tea Express at Everland in 2008. What's interesting about the latter is that it's essentially a mashup of El Toro and Balder. Tea Express starts with an El Toro-esque drop and camelback. Then it quite literally goes into a clone of Balder's layout. While prefabricated wood coasters had a higher upfront cost than traditional woodies, Intamin advertised they would require less day-to-day -day maintenance. This part is technically true. However, they still need maintenance, and the first two prefabs required costly repairs two decades after they opened. In 2016, Colossus reportedly had become extremely rough. The park closed the coaster. It had major track issues. It reopened in 2019 after a full track replacement. This cost roughly 12.5 million US dollars, which is the price tag for a sizable new coaster. Balder started experiencing problems in 2021. The coaster operated very sporadically due to track issues. Unlike Colossus, Balder didn't seem to get rough. I first rode Balder in 2017 and it was still super smooth. And those who rode it before the closure still said it was running smoothly as well. Lisa Berry invested nearly 3 million US dollars for the coaster's refurbishment and reopened in October of 2022. I recently rewrote it in 2023 and it's about as smooth as a wood coaster can possibly be. You feel a few bumps as you move further back in the train, but they cause no discomfort at all. One interesting tidbit about the refurbishment is that Balder now runs slightly slower than it used to, but the overall ride experience and sensations feel nearly identical, which is why it's still one of Lisa Berry's most popular rides. Don't be surprised if there's a wait hovering around the half hour mark midday. The line is usually minimal at the start and end of the day, Alternatively, you can use the park's free virtual queue system. You can book return times on the park's app for several rides, including Balder. You can book one attraction at a time. You get a 10 minute window to return to the ride, and you'll be greeted with no more than a 5 minute wait upon arrival. Return times for Balder go faster than most rides, but keep checking as more are added throughout the day. The standby queue line is not too appealing as it's basically a giant switchback and then a ramp into the station. But it does move at a good clip, because this coaster has such high capacity. It has long trains for a wood coaster. Each is comprised of five cars, with three rows of two. So each train can hold a max of 30 riders, and they almost always have two on the course at once. And dispatches are pretty quick. The crew usually has the next train ready to go once the prior one hits the brake run. Balder's restraints are similar to Intamin's early hypercoasters. The primary restraint is a T-shaped lap bar. Interestingly, there's no verify in the lap bar. In fact, Balder can be dispatched with lap bars raised, and you'll see this happen with unoccupied seats. This was shocking to see for a ride with airtime this strong, and also because if you've ridden El Toro, you know just how sensitive that computer system is to restraints. The lap bars in El Toro not only have a low verify position, but the computer can sometimes say certain cars lose verify after they've been checked. That's part of the reason the crew of that ride is usually hustling. The go no go on Balder is a secondary system, just a seatbelt. You're free to choose any row that you'd like once you reach the station. Every row offers plenty of airtime, but I think the airtime is stronger in the back car, so that's where I typically ride this coaster. 
Balder doesn't have any theming, but there are a few small touches prior to boarding. The name is in reference to the Scandinavian god of justice. The coaster is a nice looking entry sign, and some paintings in the back of the station. But the overall presentation of this ride is fine, especially because the queue line next to Path had underneath many of the coaster's hills. The triple out and back layout is a dense mess of wood, and you also have some sound barriers. There are tunnels on some of the larger camelbacks, and sound barriers on the back side of the ride to dampen the sound for nearby neighbors. Once dispatched, you hear a car horn. <laughs> then you round a corner and ascend the 118 foot or 36 meter tall lift hill. Unlike El Toro, Balder is a standard chain lift. It's smooth and pretty darn quiet, as you don't have the clickety clack of most wood coasters. At the top, you get a great view of the park's indoor water park under construction. Then you start turning right. Halfway through the turn, it starts banking and turns into a first drop. The other three prefabs have straight drops. I haven't ridden T-Express, but the first drops on Colossus and El Toro offer powerful ejector airtime. The profiling on Balder doesn't offer airtime nearly that strong. That being said, the twist into it offers some decent laterals, and then those in the back car get some decent ejector airtime once it straightens out. And you also have some near misses with the steel beams above your head. You then fly over a big hill. It feels sort of like an elevated speed hill. Those up front get solid and sustained ejector airtime. Those in back will start floating on the ascent. Then that airtime morphs into good ejector once you crest the top. There isn't a big drop on the other side. Rather, you head into the first of many turnarounds. And this is my biggest issue with Balder. Many wood coasters out there have turnarounds. A lot of wood coasters have minimal banking on these, so you can usually get some enjoyable laterals. Balder's turnarounds do absolutely nothing for me. They're banked just enough to design out the laterals. Then they also feel slow, so they notably disrupt the ride's pacing. And the problem is that the ride has so many of these turnarounds. You encounter five of them. I really wish they could have been underbanked, especially because the resultant laterals would have provided a nice contrast to all the airtime. After that first turnaround, you navigate a giant camelback. The crest is super tight, so everyone gets great and very sustained ejector airtime. It is especially sweet in the back because the drop is considerably larger than the ascent. And that plunge takes you into a tunnel that heightens the sense of speed. When Balder emerges, you navigate another lackluster turnaround. Then you have back-to-back -back bunny hills high above the ground. Both offer good and semi-sustained ejector airtime. I find the first hill to be a bit better than the second, and the airtime is a bit more intense in the back car in both these hills. Along with those negative Gs, there is also a great head chopper with a structure in between both hills that sneaks up on you. You then have another turnaround. This one goes left for a change but it feels even more sluggish than the first two. The train feels like it's going to stall out at the apex, but you rebuild enough speed and navigate the short but weird straightaway. Then you have another big camelback. This one also sends you into a tunnel on the descent. This offers powerful and sustained ejector airtime for all. Up next is, you guessed it, another turnaround. And it's another dull one. Then comes two more bunny hills in a row. I like how these two hills are placed directly beneath the two earlier in the ride, so you have a sea of supports on all sides. Then both offer decent and semi-sustained ejector airtime for all. Balder has one more subpart turnaround, and then you hit the ride's finale. You have finally made it back to ground level, and you have two consecutive bunny hills. I remember this having a bit more oomph in 2017, and I think this goes back to how the ride is currently running a bit slower. These hills now have okay ejector pops in front, but still solid ejector pops in the back car. You then slightly twist left and hop into the final brakes. I remember this delivering an ejector pop in my 2017 rides, but now it offers no negative Gs, which is a bummer. You then smoothly decelerate, round a corner, and return to the station, ending the 3,510 foot or 1,070 meter long coaster. So, what would I rate Balder? I would give this coaster an 8 out of 10. This is one of the best wood coasters in the world for pure ejector airtime. You have 9 different bunny hills and camelbacks, 
all of which throw you from your seat. But the ride does feel formulaic and repetitive, and not always in a good way. I have no problem with one airtime hill after another, because those maneuvers are great. But I do take issue with the turnarounds. They simply do not add anything to the experience other than turning you around. They really disrupt the pacing, as you keep getting these breathers in between all of that airtime. That being said, the coaster is still a lot of fun because of the airtime hills and the super smooth tracking. I previously preferred this ride to El Toro and Colossus, but it fell on my rerides. I think this is the Rocky Mountain construction effect. When Balder opened two decades ago, few coasters could match the sheer quantity of ejector airtime this coaster provided. Now you have RMCs that offer similarly strong ejector airtime, but they don't have the same pacing issues. You move from one element to the next faster in those rides. When I rode Balder in 2017, I hadn't ridden as many RMCs as I have now, which is why it suffered on my rerides. That being said, you still have to appreciate Balder for what it did when it came out, and it is still a good ride. So those are my thoughts on Balder, the Intamin prefabricated wood coaster at Lisa Berry. What are your thoughts on this coaster? How do you think it compares to the other prefabs out there? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.